Hey creative friends, I'm Robin Randolph and I want to welcome you to Art for Healing and Joy. In today's video, I'm going to show you all the steps I did using some of my photography and then printing it on my inkjet printer and then doing an art photo transfer onto some collage, including how I'm using this fixative that is odor free and non toxic to keep the ink from bleeding out. I'll have a link for you below on how to find this Degas fixative. And I feel like this is such a great find to find this stuff because I've watched videos with artists like Louise Fletcher and Catherine Rains and also an online great course I took with Cordula Cageman. And they all seem to refer to being able to do this only by using a laser printer as it seems that the inkjet printers would tend to have smeary printing or not be able to transfer well. But I found that it really works when I use that fixative. After I let my inkjet copies thoroughly dry from the fixative, I then began to tear around the edges to give it that sort of rougher look. If you're new to my channel and haven't watched some of my other videos, I'm very picky about the kinds of products I use. I don't like using toxic or smelly or fumy paints, glues, mediums, or fixatives. So I was thrilled to discover this wonderful acrylic medium made by Natural Earth Paints. And this is all I use now for gluing down anything onto my collages. And I'll link that for you below. I just find it absolutely essential to consider the effects of products, not only for my own health, but also on the environment as well. Once I decided what pieces I wanted to go where, I began to put a coat of the acrylic medium on top of the copy of the photograph so that the printed side is getting the glue on it and it's going to be turned over face down onto a dry, whatever dry canvas or surface or, or painted paper you want to use. And then you can see I'm just using my fingers to smooth it down to make sure there's no air bubbles. It's really important that there's no gaps, no air bubbles, and that the surface that you're working on is completely dry before you glue it down. So you can see I'm getting under the lip of the edges and using my fingers to just make sure every available part of the surface is touching and glued down. And here you can see I'm repeating that same process with some other pieces. You can also use a soft sponge and gently push down and pat down as well. So you can leave it to dry and you can leave it overnight to dry if you wanted to or for several hours. But I wanted to speed it up so I used my blow dryer. And the thing is, is you have to make sure it's dry on both sides. Okay, once I was sure it was totally dry, I took a soft, clean sponge and dipped it into some water and just got it damp, squeezing out any extra liquid. And then doing a very pressured, slow dabbing motion, I got the whole backside of each piece totally damp to the point where you could see the ink from underneath coming through. And slowly and carefully, I kept repeating that and repeating that until I knew that each piece was thoroughly damp and I could really start to see the image penetrating through the, the moisture. And then very carefully and gently, I start rubbing in a circular motion. And I found it was easier and more controllable, manageable to 
switch over to my fingers and you can see as the layers on top of the copy paper begin to peel off. And I switched back and forth between fingers and the soft damp sponge. And as you can see it tends to make quite a bit of mess all over your workspace so just be prepared for that. Here I'm working on top of a poster board so it makes it really easy to brush the loose pieces onto that and then pick that up and brush it into a nearby trash bag I have set up right next to me. So I'm still quite new at doing this and the goal is to get the ink to transfer down onto the page. And what you're doing here, or what I'm doing here, is peeling away the layers of the paint so that what's left remaining is the transference of the ink onto the collage itself. And in my experimenting, that doesn't always work out the way I had intended it. So, nonetheless, even if it doesn't work out that way, I still keep experimenting and playing with whatever shows up in the moment. And I did copy a bunch of these different photos and used them over and over. I made several pieces and just kept learning and um, experimenting and practicing. So I'm going to show you several pieces that I created learning how to do this. And I feel like the key to art for healing and joy is just allowing yourself to have fun as you learn. And all of these experiments have really been helping me to grow as an artist. Because this was my first attempt, I was very relaxed with letting it just be a play session, experimenting. Uh, I was using some of those Japanese collage papers I had made. If um, you saw my last video, I showed how I made those. And so I was just fine with letting things just be fun, fast, um, I gave myself full permission to make mistakes and just see where it the process took me. So again, this I don't see this as a, a finished work of art per se, but um, but more of a learning process and a play session. And I will show you how this completes and then also ones I made afterwards. And some of them I really liked. For this piece, I was using up old little scraps of fabrics like the rust colored um, fabric I made up atop using um, an old kettle I'd found in the ground and dyed the fabrics. I just wanted to play around with little bits and bobs that I had laying around in the studio. So that's what I'm doing here. Lost again, going back around Dreaming of a time when I get things right Lost in the shadows of a million stars Shouldn't they enlighten my near and far? Shouldn't they at all just tell me where you are? Send a prayer if I'm out of
Because I'm working on a black poster board surface, I've inserted a plastic chute so that while I'm gluing, none of the papers will stick. Halfway hard, send a little love, I'll make it back. And now I'll show you all of the finished art I made using the photo transfers. much for watching and also if you go to my website robinrandolph.com and you scroll on down you'll see that all of my available art is right here you can click to take a look at that and then if you scroll below that you can subscribe right here and download my favorite supplies go-to list right here 
and also you can get an instant download copy of my guide for how to create beautiful color palettes. If you're enjoying my videos and you want to help me out, I so appreciate it if you can like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please be sure to leave them below. I always love to hear from you. Okay, see you on the next video.